So welcome to this new series of videos about mapping with OSM. Um, as we had in April uh, during the lo lockdown, there was um, some some uh, some talks as part of the Building Ireland project. So since we have a new lockdown, we are, we are are going back into a new phase of focused mapping of buildings. Now part of that of that process is to validate the tiles which have been done and by having a fast turnover of mapping and validating we can get a good um, sense of progress here on the island of Ireland. And so to talk about the issue uh, uh, we have two very accomplished validators. We have um, Sean who is a lecturer and then we have uh, Jans who is the most prolific validator on uh, in Ireland at least and maybe elsewhere as well. So can you both say hi? Hello. Hi everyone. And who wants to just uh, maybe say a few words about themselves as well? Maybe Jans, maybe you could start. Yeah, actually, um, my name is Jens. Um, I'm a um, OSM mapper. I, I think since five years, um, I'm uh, located in uh, north of Germany. Um, yeah, and uh, I joined um, OSM Ireland because I have a personal preference for uh, mapping buildings. And Sean? Very good. I'm Sean Day. I'm uh, I'm an OSM mapper as well, and uh, attempt to contribute by doing validation where I can. I've been mapping, I guess, for I suppose probably probably about ten years now. Um, I'm Canadian. I'm in Ireland. I've been in Ireland for I guess twelve or thirteen years now, and uh, I lecture in digital humanities and information technology. And there is a good little crossover there, so I attempt to involve my students in a lot of the work that we do. Right, so uh, for for those who are um, maybe new to the the validation um, part of mapping, it can you know seem a bit scary because you have to kind of have a certain level of of of, of knowledge to be able to judge. <clears throat> but it, it's also a good tool to 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 self learn. So <clears throat> so can you uh, maybe? Well, but, but first of all, give a brief talk about what validation is and why it is useful and how it's, it's helpful for the learning process as a mapper. Maybe Sean, to start there. Okay, okay. well, um, validation is kind of the next step, but it is in, in terms of trying to, you know, self-qualify and so forth, I think it's really based on the fact that it's a second set of eyes. It's an opportunity to make sure that there's a focused second set of eyes on it. You do need some experience to do it. So it isn't the sort of thing that, that we generally would recommend people jumping into um, right off the bat. Take time, get used to mapping, and you'll get familiar yourself with it from that standpoint. But validation is, is kind of that next step up to provide a focused second set of eyes that systematically work through looking for the more common errors and ensuring that the particular aspects of the tasks that are set um, are actually met from that standpoint. There's two ways of going about it. I just, just very briefly, one in terms of just, you know, using your eyes and doing it. And the second is trying to use a variety of, of tools that are available in the particular editors that you might use, whether it's ID, whether it's Jawsome, um, that help you carry out that process. But it is a more advanced task, but it's, it's a task that's designed to help those that are less advanced get a chance to increase their own um, knowledge about how mapping is undertaken. So it adds to that experience with very good feedback. And so how did validation become such a big part of your mapping day to day? I, I, I think, um, yeah, um, you need validation to, to check the work progress. Um, um, and and so that the mapper and validator said it's done and uh, I I I can uh, uh, take both roles um, uh, I I can be the mapper or the validator but as the validator role is under uh, uh, stuffed in in OSM Island uh, I mostly be the validator. When you first began mapping, 
Uh, did you start to validate shortly afterwards, or did you, or it did it take you time to uh, go from mapping to validation, or? No, no, no. It was years later. Um, I, I first uh, uh, come familiar with all the uh, tools, uh, such as the different editors and the options they have, and um, QA tools, and um, yeah. Um, I, I f first come in contact um, on on Hot OSM um, with with the validation there. Um, and yeah, later on in, in OSM Ireland. And uh, was there anything, was there any hurdles which you faced or any difficulties uh, which you faced uh, when you first began validation? And was there any kind of mentors or, or any help which you got to, uh, to, to teach you about it? Or was it all self-taught? Um, I think it's mo mostly self-taught. Um, um, on Hot OSM, um, they often allow just experienced um, mappers for the validation role. So um, it's it's hard to come into that uh, uh, role at all. And um, yeah, mo mo mostly is to check the um, yeah mapping instructions against what you what you have in front of you and um y you could ask you um uh, would i accept that if i do the uh, m do that mapping by myself great yeah and um so for the 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 two of you uh have you a particular philosophy for valid for valid edition um Maybe some key principles, or just some some way you which you approach a tile. So you, you you mind a kind of philosophy for validation? Yeah, like if you have um, a particular approach to it. Yeah, um, I think for, first it's it's important to have an appreciation to contribute contributors so um I, I think it's important to say some friendly uh, commands to every contribution um but uh it's time uh, uh, it's sometimes too much to do that for every tile for example um then uh i, I think that can be forgotten is to always check for common problems um, or outdated style data issues. Um, the, the the two big editors such as ID and jo Josm um, provide such checkers, and uh, you should do, uh, should accept that, um, or or uh, you you should use that. Um, um, uh, another philosophy for me is um, to um, do highest risk first. That means to choose the unknown contributors first in the task manager and then the experienced one. Um, and yeah, uh, uh, another uh, validation principle for me is to, uh, I, I invalidate just that, that I can fix my, by myself in five minutes. Or when I assume uh, that the mapper did a mistake again and again, or I, I assume that he will uh, redo that in the future, and uh, otherwise I uh, always accept small weaknesses. And Sean, um, how would that contrast with your approach to mapping? Or I mean, I mean to validating. Sorry. No, no, that's it's very good. I mean, it, it's very good to hear Jens on that and so forth and hear his, his talk on it. I think one of the, the the most salient things he said there was just this idea about, you know, hold, holding people to the, home, the same caliber as himself is how would I approach that? And, and yes, certainly at the outset, that crucial thing is just looking at what the instructions are and trying to figure out how people would interpret those instructions. And so I think that is very important. Um, being able to, you know, think about the level of the guidance that you can give when, when approaching that. So I, I like this idea of looking at the people that might be less experienced at the outset, 
the, the higher risk potentially and, and spending the time there to both, you know, try and guide them through um, this perspective and, and give them the big guidance as opposed to the ones that you probably can count on a little more. There is always that, that trade-off between how much do you actually do yourself there. And I think the five-minute rule is a very strong one there, that if, if there's a variety of things that you can fix fairly quickly, you obviously do do those. But, you know, you tend to start with the more common aspects of, you know, what you're looking for there. And in a lot of cases, that's trying to figure out whether they've used multiple sources of imagery, trying to look at the, you know, the actual building quality, looking for some of the cookie-cutter approaches. And... Even in a lot of the cookie cutter approaches where people have actually gone through and obviously just copied and duplicate, copy and duplicate it, there's a lot of value in that insofar as you do realize that there's a lot of uniformity in construction that doesn't get necessarily reflected in the imagery and that they've attempted to do that. But you also have to take into account that yes, a lot of them are starting out and really need the support and, and the little nudge in the right direction, just as probably most of all most of us all did, you know, when we started out mapping. So I can say certainly, you know, I, I didn't move into validation for quite a few years from that standpoint. It would have come in the same sort of background of being involved in, you know, the hot tasks that we were doing in Lesotho in, in fairness. And then, you know, it kind of ratcheted up. I think there's a lot of people, frankly, even through hot though, that start um, validating very quickly, sometimes where they shouldn't necessarily I think one of the bigger challenges is, you know, trying to get into the mindset and trying to appreciate and respectfully appreciate what people have been doing, but also attempt to realize where, you know, some of it's been gamified and some of it's been sped up and some people are rushing through it, you know, an attempt to get things down, which has the positive standpoints of getting mapping done. But, you know, what is the value of that mapping at the end? And so I think from a validator standpoint, you're trying to take a lot of that into account. But feedback, feedback, feedback with great respect. Yes, I mean, I would like the idea of um, of, um, of focusing on new users and giving them feedback because that's a good um, way to keep the engagement up because it's a process... Um, because mapping is a, is a process of learning new things. I find that if I don't learn new things, I can get a bit kind of annoyed that I'm not really progressing or, or I'm just kind of being very repetitive. Is it, is it, is it things which you do also to kind of change up how you map or how you validate, you know, because, uh, because you know, because like with, with, with houses, they can be very similar or is it, or is housing such a, one wonderful thing for you. It just, it, it it's never something uh, uh, which can be annoying. Sean, did it, was that clear as as a question? In terms of the annoyance factor, in terms of trying to deal with houses, um, for the validator, I mean, with validation, you've got to keep your validation hat on fairly strongly. There, from that standpoint, I think it's, I think you know, it is very, very important, and and it's tough to to validate for long periods of time because of that level of focus. Um, the one thing, you know, from my standpoint, again, it's the flipping back and forth between the imagery, but and this is uh, the other aspect is really trying to find an appropriately methodological approach to it. But to truly value that, you know, what you're trying to do is create good quality maps that are available to others and, and usable for a wide variety of tasks. In many cases, you know, just having, you know, the indication of the building, and I know from earlier discussion here, certainly, you know, in some tasks, all you want to know is that there's a building there, as opposed to the size of the building, the the, the particular dimensions of the building, um, the materials of the building, access to the building, a lot of these other different things that you could add to it. Um, it's going to vary by task from that standpoint. There's an opportunity, certainly, you know, in, in the tasks that we're undertaking, you know, in Ireland very much to avail ourselves of the local knowledge of the local cultural knowledge of Ireland and the nature of how buildings are created here or, you know, constructed here and various different um, other structures and, and road patterns to add that knowledge that has the ability to allow people to use this data for a wide variety of uses. And that's, a lot of this is falling to the role of validator right now to go in and say, okay, building equals yes isn't good enough. I can actually say that's a semi-detached house. And and being able to start to, to, to look with a very intent eye on adding to the tagging that's been undertaken. 
but in a lot of cases that does require the local or the hyperlocal uh, person that has greater familiarity with that. So it really calls for that particular uh, collaboration. And yes, you, so, so do you need to change your approach to how you map or how you validate or do you need to learn new tools to keep up your interest or are you happy to just keep on kind of doing or, or have you an approach which you just can keep on using? Yeah, um, actually, I think I, I learn every day, um, uh, often from, from other mappers, uh, from other experienced mappers. Um, how 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 to make make things? Uh, uh, how to learn new methods? Um, as um, Sean said before, um, you you have to look on the different imagery for for every region first. So to identify what's the latest imagery, um, which is the most orthogonal um, 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 material, and um, yeah. Uh, I, I think you, you you have to learn every option of your uh, of the tools you're using. It's it's, it's such the same as you you using using a, a, a tool in your workshop, and uh, you you have to learn how to handle them. And um, I I think you need that both for mapping and validation. So you both mentioned that it took a few years for you to both begin validating and. And yet you also mentioned that there is a lack of all editors in the Building Ireland project. So, should the like how though should the bar to entry to people who uh, be f- to begin validating? Uh, was a question to me or Sean? For either. Okay. Um... Yeah, I, I think validation is a is a task every experienced or intermediate mapper could could do that, and um, I think it's it's hard to me- measure um, who is an intermediate or experienced uh, mapper. Uh, I I know a lot of mappers that do more contribution than me, but doing all the same um, uh, uh, mistakes again. Um, so um, I wouldn't wouldn't say that an experienced mapper is uh, one with uh, twenty thousand uh, uh, contributions. Um, uh, I think an experienced person has experience with with common mistakes, uh, no uh, set of editors, uh, no quality assurance tools, and know them well. Uh, and um, yeah, it can, it can be a plus if you're a local, but in the most regions of the world, you're not a local. So, um, but but we, we have have a lot of fantastic tools that that helps you in the in the validation role, um, such as Mapillary, and um, yeah, um, I think I think we miss a chance if if we uh, um, reduce the amount of of validators or, or the validator role uh, to a handful of people. Yeah, absolutely. No, I think that's that 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 last statement is absolutely cruel or cruel, <laughs> absolutely uh, correct from that standpoint. It's very cruel. Um, I think. And, and implicit within all of the discussion that Jens is raising there is the fact that you'll become a better mapper by doing validation as well. You're exposing yourself to a lot of other people's um, ways of going about things. You're, you're, you're actually having to take a different approach to this. So I think by putting the validator hat on and you know, taking the appropriate authority with that and going through what it is you have to undertake to do that, you know, without any guidance, I think can be very dangerous. But if you actually say, go to, you know, the OpenStreetMap wiki and take a look at what they talk about with validation, go to some of the other YouTube videos about validation and so forth and be conscientious about it. You're switching into a different role. You're undertaking that. You're going through it. And I think it can change your perspective on it. And I think it'll also change how, how you map as well and i think that's very very important so i think the bar is going to be very individual you know from the standpoint so there's no hard and fast rule but i think opening it up to more validation is probably a better thing for actually improving the quality of mapping all around and i think that's a you know a very very important thing to do so it's a matter of whether you do anything with a degree of you know conscientious um engagement with it that i that is the most important part 
Yeah, so um, actually, just um, as, a, as a side question to Jens, um, be, be, because you're from Germany, um, had you have any kind of cultural issues around, or had you any kind of issues around understanding the Irish landscape when, when it comes to mapping buildings, or was that thing you um, uh, like? So, but what, what, what were the differences between mapping in Germany and mapping in Ireland? Yeah, uh, I, I, I think it's um, in, in the part where I live, uh, a very, very, um, how to say, rural areas. Um, I, I, I think it's it's uh, uh, quite similar in in most parts of Ireland. Um, but but in the, the urban areas, um, uh, there is a quite uh, other other mapping with building it's harder to terrace them um and uh yeah and in uh, uh, rural areas you have often a, a lot of buildings you can't classify and uh which are not rectangular and uh yeah but i start started with with classifying um buildings uh, not so long ago and um, uh, in, in, in former mapping approaches I just used building yes so um, and and OSM Island um, brings me a new yeah, horizon about that I'm, I'm moving on to to the task manager itself because it was designed for quick mapping in um, 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 in parts of the world which are hard to reach, um, or which haven't got a lot of up to date maps, how do you think that the tool of uh, of Hosh translate to maybe more detailed mapping um, in Ireland, uh, Sean? Personally, I think it adapts very well from the standpoint of being able to, you know, take this tile based approach and be able to allow people to, you know, make smaller tiles to adapt to the particular landscape that is being attempted. And that also sets it out very nicely for, you know, this looking specifically for the particular validator after after that's been done and, and bring this out. I think in many ways there is a degree of this idea of the the peer review concept that 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 Kieran's brought up there that's really emerging as part of that um it 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 it's, it 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 uses a language of validation and mapping but i think in a lot of cases a lot of people are stepping up sort of thing to take on the role and i think at that point it becomes peer peer um very strong at the same time, I mean, this idea of giving the appropriate feedback is absolutely crucial. It provides, you know, a, a double form of feedback from that standpoint that is very, very strong. Um, so I think it breaks down these tasks very well. Otherwise, you're, you're, you're leaving it out there for people to, you know, have to develop their own little ways, their own ways of finding out where they should be validating and so forth. So that I think the approach from a task manager is, is, is good in that way. And Jens, how do you find the hot tool for mapping in Ireland? Uh, I, I mean, what's the alternative? Um, you need a platform um, to measure the, the joint effort and, and uh, to define objectives, uh, which parts to map. And um, I think there are uh, some uh, things that could be changed. For example, um, uh, I, I, I think one objective of the uh, validation is um, to make uh, people a better mapper. And um, I, I think for, for most experienced mappers, it's a uh, uh, waste of time to to make validation. For, for example, if I uh, validate uh, Sean's tiles. And um, uh, I, I mean, um, we, we could overthink that. Um, uh, other uh, or my personal wishes about the tool uh, should be um, uh, as a validator. I, I wish to have an order to to validate, um, so that there's not so much time between the contribution of a person and the validation. Because I think um, immediate feedback 
is uh, um, uh, uh, important. And um, uh, other other wishes are um, I like a, a choice list for a feedback, for example, five stars or such, uh, like like from from shopping portals, and. Um, What, what should be really helpful should be um, if if I could compare uh, two different Im imageries um, at once. Um, there is such such a tool from uh, from Ger Germany, uh, Geofabrics Map Compare, and um, where you can have four views at once from from uh, different maps. And um, I think that should, this should be made a validation much easier. But some, uh, there must be someone who, who programmed this tool. And at the, at the moment, I think uh, the, the hot OSM task manager is fine. For, for finding people to be uh, validators, is there maybe some more Peter Pierce Uh, work we could do by maybe having some training sessions or something um, like that to make it maybe a little bit more f uh, formal, Sean? Um, I, I'm not sure how much you'd formalize that. I think the, the most important aspect is actually being able to, you know, have a discussion around it and being know when to raise your hand and ask a question. So I'm happy, actually, when Jens gives me feedback on the things he validates. So him saying he doesn't need to, he does need to. I mean, you're constantly learning from that standpoint. So there is an opportunity within that. But I think that's where you're probably coming back to some of the more Telegram-based um, discussion around it. It's really tough to get away from that as the best means to do it. You're your own best judge in terms of what you can and can't do generally, but I think people have to be brave enough to attempt it, but know where they can go for that help. I think there's, you know, certain approaches in terms of, you know, the process that you might go on through go through in terms of what do you start looking for? Absolutely, you know, and 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 I think Jens mentioned a little bit of that earlier on in terms of looking for, you know, orthogonal buildings, looking for things that look like they might be repeated, looking for things that have clearly, you know, not uh they've been done using imagery that hasn't been offset properly starting to see some of the overlaps and so forth and using specific tools. So there's probably some instruction on, you know, both issues and ID or using, say, um, the hot CSS tool in, in Jossum to start to be able to identify some of the problems when you're doing it. I think you, as over time, you become um, more and more adept at it. Absolutely. But there's, there's a lot of, there is a lot of good training out there on it, you know, in the broadest sense. When you start to get very specific, it's going to come down to the greater, you know, within their particular country, there might be some subtleties and so forth that you might be missing. But I think it's a matter of having, you know, a forum where you can actually know that you can turn to people for an answer there. And like I said in the chat there, that map compare for validation would be an absolutely great tool. You know, I think what is probably lacking right now is a lot of attention to providing tools for validation. So they're fairly limited when you're turning to, say, the two I just mentioned in, in, in they're probably the most popular validation tools. The rest of the stuff we're really kludging together. And there are tools out there, absolutely, like map compare, that if you were presented with that particular screen and saw a particular area, that would pull out so much more right off the bat that you could then start to look at. But most people that are mapping have gotten fairly, you know, used to looking at what other people have done and thinking about, you know, how well that compares to what they see. So there is, for those that aren't even validating, I think there's a nascent validation process that's even starting to emerge there. And I think it's just being open to trying it and, and being willing to engage with the community. So, If anything, you know, in, in, in the task manager and so forth, I think it's the opportunity to formulate better some of the, the feedback that's given. And Jens, um, how do you feel about the tools that are there to train people how to validate and if you think uh, some more peer-to-peer -peer training will be useful? I, I think the people could train itself um, uh, w w with some with some hinds. I think the um, Sean Sean and I talked a, a lot about um, um, 
the, the important points, uh, uh, such as orthogonal uh, buildings or, or missing buildings, how to find them with with different imagery. And and I think uh, after a while uh, mapping in in the um, uh, Hot OSM uh, task manager, um, it's it's fine to to uh, s start um, with validation. Um, uh, as a as a tip, uh, you, you can start in, in more rural areas where not so much buildings, and it's easier, uh, uh, yeah, to to find missing things. And so, are there any other um, common flaws or mistakes which you come across, Sean? <laughs> Good question. Um, other than the ones we've you know started to mention there. I'm not coming to a lot right there. I mean, we're thinking very much down building tasks right now. I mean, if we start to, you know, bridge that out a little bit more into, into other tasks, definitely when it comes to ways, we end up with a lot and you end up with a lot of directional issues and, and, and the nature of segments and, and, and so forth that you'd start to, to get into there. But no, I, I mean, the most common, the most, the, the most common flaw we're running into right now is, is, is the fact that, you know, one of our imagery layers ten, can actually ha, um, be way out of whack in a lot of the tasks that we're um, setting out right now. And I think for people that are going into that and just forgetting it or 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 n not even being aware that it happens and ending up with a lot of, of uh, a bad imagery offset there is probably one of the biggest that we're facing right now. And knowing that the second, you know, there's other imagery layers available so that if the shadow is that bad, you've got to look in the other. That becomes, you know, uh, one of the, one of the bigger ones for me. Um, Huron's mentioning the size of buildings, and that's really got a lot to do with, you know, the experience of the mapper and so forth. And knowing to look for, you know, where it actually hits the ground, being able to switch between different imagery um, to try and find that. Some, you know, it depends on where that photo was taken from in terms of, you know, whether it actually shows you just the roof line or whether you're actually able to get, you know, the actual um, um, ground line and be able to do it. So I think that becomes, you know, more and more of a task as people become experienced. So with a lot of junior mappers, yeah, you're going to run into those, you know, quite a bit. It's an approach to mapping. I mean, it's a matter of whether you're trying to really, you know, aim for quality or whether you're just trying to get as much done. And yeah, so it's a little... Have we, have we covered all of the common mistakes um, which, which come across, or is there anything else which, uh, which you can think of? I think be beneath the imagery offset issues, um, uh, I think one of the most uh, um, common flaws are uh, new buildings, buildings under construction. Uh, I mean, new buildings appear in the mapping imagery, and um, that can be... Um, not uh, overseen by the mapper, or it it can be just just new because it's a long time between validation and contribution. Um, also, sometimes I see uh, um, missing rectangular alignment of buildings, and uh, uh, on the on the road level, uh, sometimes there are unconnected roads and road islands, which uh, means that the roads are not connected to the network. Uh, looking at the last question here, if things we, which we have already covered, but just to kind of um, wrap up, what are the, the kind of key points that somebody who is new to validation, who 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 wants to uh, start, should should keep in mind? Uh, Sean. Sure, sure. Um, if you're new to validation and you want to start, um, I think you should jump in and try it. Um, I think the most important thing I think that was really mentioned was really realizing that you are validating and not mapping at that stage. So you're stepping out of this and trying to come at it from the perspective um, of, of somebody that's looking down on this and realizing it's already been done. I would, I would really say, take a look at um, very quickly at some of the YouTube uh, videos that are already out there from a variety of different sources and fairness, you know, that's, that's, they're, they're going to give you some of those, those things. Think about some of those common things that we've mentioned from the standpoint in, town, in terms of how you approach buildings and start to, you know, look at them with that. But the other side of it from the validation standpoint, 
for me will always be that, you know, you have to take on the role of validator and realize that, you know, you are certainly, you know, attempting to look for errors and providing that second set of eyes on it, but you're also looking at improving the process of mapping. So ensuring that you give really good feedback um, when you see somebody that's making, you know, a potentially common mistake on a recurring basis, somebody that is clearly new to the game and so forth, and really assuming the role of, of, a teacher from the standpoint and instructing and realizing that you probably made a lot of these same mistakes yourself and feel free to admit that. Um, but trying to, you know, raise the quality of mapping at the outset is really the big opportunity there. So as a validator, you know, you're assuming that role of trying to share your knowledge and your experience. And yeah, do you have, have, have anything else to, to add to that? Yeah, yeah. I just want to motivate mappers that they get their feet wet and uh, uh, get into the validation role. And um, yeah, I um, I think Sean Sean said everything about uh, uh, how how to start. And uh, yeah, I w just want to motivate you to try it. We have one last question from the audience. Anne asks um, a very good question about terrace buildings which go into the next tile and uh, it's an issue I faced myself I'm not sure if you if either of you have a good solution to this I, I always uh, get that borders um, if, if there are more than 50% inside your tile um, you are the one to uh, draw that building um, um, and uh, same for terracing I, I I mean so uh, so so my, so my, so my approach is to have the buildings on your side of the tile I press the Q button to square them off and then it should be kind of and then I can leave it there and then I leave the then I'm as I said I try and jump well I jump over to the next tile afterwards um is generally my approach Sean I think it's a good one if you're moving quick enough there from that standpoint, um, you know, especially with the terraced houses and so forth and the fact that we're, you know, doing our orthogonalization there as we're going along. I'll admit, you know, if, as, as a mapper, that's where I, 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 I will butt into another tile and quickly save it sort of thing so I can get that up as quickly as possible. But it's not to say that won't run into, you know, a few issues around the freshness of the data that the other mapper's working with. So I'd be very conscious as a mapper when, I, when I'm doing that. Um, I think it's just a matter of speed there and, and, and realizing that somebody else exists, somebody else could be mapping, somebody else could be working on it from that standpoint. Um, but coming back to the 50% rule, if something, a rule, if something touches, you know, the tile that I'm working on from that standpoint, I generally, you know, take it under my, my, my wing to, to map that and save it as quickly as possible. If I'm conscious as other people mapping in that instance. And Kiran has stuck into with one last question about, about using the, the Jossum filter for to find building equals yes, which I, which I think is more of a subtle hint for mappers to use that tool. Any of you have a comment on on, on using filters for finding stuff? Yes, use them. Um, yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's that jumping off point. It's where, you know, you kind of start to approach your validation one. And it depends on what editor you're more familiar with. Like I say, I mean, the issues in ID, ID are a good one to start with as well. But when you have the more power of, of, of Jossum to start to do some of the filtering, that will bring some stuff to the fore right off the bat that will draw you to it. I think finding some of the more subtle stuff is is the next part of the equation when you're actually doing the validation. And a lot of that ends up being a non-automated fashion, but the filters are a great jumping off spot. I, I, I normally use um, overpass turbo um, for for such quests um, because I'm actually not using Jordan. Um, yeah. Well, thank you uh, both very much for your insights into how to validate and, uh, and thank you all for coming.